Question, what do you think is one of the most challenging things you could paint? Well, to me, it used to be grass. And honestly, I struggled for many years on how to paint it. And in ways, I had a lot of failed attempts too. But the greatest failure you could ever make is not to try again. And today, I am going to show you how to paint grass. Hello and welcome. My name is Charlemos. I go by Bob. I am not your typical painter. And today, I'm going to do a long, lengthy demonstration on how to paint grass. Also, if you like this video, please let me know in the comments because a lot of time went into creating this how-to video and this will give me an idea if I should create more in the future. And let me know if there's subjects you would like me to cover. But before we get started, I want to explain a few things. First and foremost, there's many different types of grass out there. This video will be a demonstration of very green, lush grass. It was during the season of March in Greece where it was very rainy and everything was nice and green. I'm saying this because there's not a one size fits all for techniques on grass. They might be similar, but there's always some variations. But in most scenarios, it involves about the same kind of techniques. The second is the lighting. The day I shot the photo for the painting I'm working on was overcast and not sunny. So you'll notice the green is more on the cooler side and not as warm as it could have been. But that doesn't mean to go exactly based on the color of the photo. Sometimes you have to exaggerate a little bit to get a sense of depth and distance. And the third thing I want to go over is you're not really going to be painting every grass the way you see it. And in most scenarios, you're just gonna do an impression that there's grass. Because if you really did try to paint every blade, um, you'll probably go insane. But with that said, depending on the location of the grass, it might be something necessary just to establish the sense of three dimensionality. I'm gonna break this video into two parts. This part will be about grass in the distance. And the second one will be mostly on up close grass. That will involve a lot of details. Anyway, Let's get started with this demo. At the time of this video, I'm actually pretty advanced into the painting and I already established most of the grass. And I wanna say I'm about 90, 95% finished with this patch of grass, but I most likely will probably go back into it. But as you can see, I also began working on grass that's a lot closer, but that will be for a different video. It's always important to evaluate the reference photo that you're going to use for painting. This is my photo and this is a section we're going to be focusing on today. Things I want to point out before I get started with this demo is how it's not just a green. There's lots of variations throughout the field. The reason there's different variations in color is because it's not exactly a perfectly flat land and the grass is not perfectly cut. And because of the imperfections and not being a level ground, there's bumps and dips throughout and that creates a lot of different colors and highlights and different heights, like little mounds of earth. These are the imperfections that are gonna make your illusion of grass more believable. Because if you just paint it green, it's gonna look more like a cartoon. Second, the grass starts to appear more sharper up close and more dull in the back. And this is very important when you're painting the grass to create that illusion. Using a little bit of white in the background is going to push it back more. And you want also softer brush strokes towards the back. And as you get closer, sharper and more refined lines. And as a bonus, it's never a bad idea to try to capture some of the variations in the field. For example, a hidden twig and some other little plants that are sticking out. As mentioned before, I'm actually a slow painter. This is the actual speed, but most of the video will be four times this. I didn't jump right into the grass. I started with the underpainting first. So this is how it all started. I did start off with making a few batches of green that I was going to use frequently while painting the grass. That's a very important first step 
and it will save you time. For more information, check out my video, How to Mix Greens. Some will find it surprising I don't use green out of the tube and only have one in my disposal, which is Viridian. Anyhow, after making a bunch of greens, it's time to paint the grass. So let's speed up a little bit to the actual demonstration part now. Remember, the grass is only a small part of the painting. So before I even get started on the grass, there's the whole background of the painting to paint, like the hills in the distance, the log, trees, and some of the dirt patch in the middle with some twigs and dead grass. Once I establish those, and a nice underpainting where the grass will be, then I start building it up patch by patch, blade by blade, depending on how close or how far from the viewing plane the grass will be. I want to mention in advance that there's lots of repetition when doing grass. So it might not be the most exciting thing to do, but it requires lots of dedication to pull off an illusion of it. So with the repetition, I'll probably be repeating myself often as well. When painting grass in a field, it's always good to start in the back first and lay out things and to paint out little details to establish kind of like a road map of where everything else will fall. The field is not level, so the first step was to lay lights and darks to distinguish where there's ups and downs in the terrain. And the idea is mainly to block color in. Detail will come later, but first simple shapes and bodies of color to establish where everything will be. I am following the photo to an extent, but ultimately the goal is to create the illusion of grass, not to copy it. Most of the strokes are up and down in direction, and that is intentional, because that's how grass is. It usually stands up from the ground. It might not be in a straight line, but for the most part, it's usually up. I'm going to fast forward here a little bit. There's lots of repetition when doing this. Again, apply bodies of color, then some line work, and variations of lines in different directions. Blur if necessary, and then repeat. I feel the more you do it, the better the illusion that there's a lot of blades of grass. In the distance, there's not just grass. There's other plants too, so one of the things I'm trying to do is create a variation in the field. There's a few darker plants and I try to paint them for a sense of variation. Also not all the time grass is green. The photo I'm using is during a day where it's an overcast, which means very little sun. After laying out some of the bodies of color, I'm starting to do some of the detail which is individual blades of grass. I'm using a very thin brush, liner type, to lay out those lines. One of my brushes is a 10 slash zero, and the other one is a 18 slash zero, so they're very thin. But besides applying those lines, I'm also going back and blurring them too. Everything is in a direction. What I find useful when doing grass is working wet on wet for the most part. You want to take advantage of the oil being wet to carve color right into it and then smooth it out or blur it. And this is very important for grass in the distance because it's not going to be as sharp as something up close. This illusion is a lot easier to deal with when the paint is wet. You could do it when the paint is dry, but it won't be as easy. Again, I apply lines, and then I blur, and different colors too. There's a lot of reasons why there's different colors of grass. Part of it is because of the distance, another part is because of the hills and ground being different elevations. Your goal is to look very carefully for those differences and paint your terrain accordingly. Another helpful tip is go from dark to light. Applying the darker grass first helps bring forward the blades that are visible. And it makes sense because grass that is more hidden tends to be darker because of the lighting. 
It's hidden, so there's less light, thus it's darker. But that doesn't mean you can't paint darker ones on top of the brighter ones. Sometimes you have to go back and in ways add those darks. I'm gonna fast forward here a little bit, but the point I'm gonna try to make is just because there's grass in the distance, that doesn't mean everything should be blurry. I went back and added some more line work and sharpened some of the blades here and there in the middle of the grass as well. The idea is to show some detail, but obviously as you get closer, there will be more and more blades of grass visible. Again, bodies of color, line work, and blur if necessary, then repeat. Here I'm blurring again. Again, blurring comes in handy when painting grass. And always do your blurring directional. There are some highlights also in the grass and different weeds. I believe that's why I applied these brighter whites. But they're not going to be that pronounced in the end because I will blur them. But I do want to establish the color there. Let's fast forward a little bit again. The most difficult grass to probably paint is the one that has obstacles. For example, this area right here where there's lots of twigs. That's why it's very important to work the background first and then go forward into the foreground when doing a painting because you could overlap the grass. But I did paint a good portion of where everything will be so I have an idea. So I'm not too concerned when I'm painting this area of overlapping pieces of the branches because I know they're just there mainly as guides. This painting doesn't just have grass. The main focus is the actual tree that has fallen. So it's very important to paint and make it look like it actually belongs in the area. But one of the things I did is I darkened the grass where the tree trunk is. That way it kind of stands out a little. Okay, fast forward again, like before, bodies of color, some line work, blur, and then repeat if necessary. But the closer to the front, more line work. Anyhow, as you get closer to the front, you start to get more detail, but the process is the same. You wanna lay out big bodies of color and be mindful of areas where there's dirt visible. Here I'm applying some of the dirt and applying lights and darks that will act as a roadmap as I paint. And my brushwork again is directional, mainly vertical brushwork, ups and downs. While I use liner brushes for the actual grass blades, to lay out the bodies of paint, it's usually the flat brushes. So it's a combination of both. Typically, while painting grass, I have about four different brushes. This area is a smaller one, but if it was a larger scale painting, I definitely would have a few more brushes, mainly on the larger size, but we'll definitely hold on to some of the tinier ones for the grass up close. It's also good to have a good underpainting prior to attempting this. This would have been a lot more difficult to have done if it was just a completely blank white canvas. That's why I laid out some greens in the start and even patches of grayish brown for the dirt areas. They made this process in the end a lot more easier to do because white shown through for both areas would not have been as nice. The underpainting in a way fills a lot of gaps and it allows me to focus on more detail. One thing that I find helpful when it comes to blurring is to try to get between individual blades of grass, particularly the bright ones, because ultimately those are the ones that in a way would stand out. So leaving them looking a little sharper creates a better illusion. So if you notice when I blur, it's always between the brighter ones. And if I blur them too much, I go back. As much as I look at the photo as I do this, it's not so much to copy each blade, but more of to try to get a feel of how the grass looks, the pattern, the color, the direction. I will cherry pick a few blades that look interesting and apply them into the painting. But overall, I'm trying to get the essence of how it appears in the landscape. And this is wild grass. Lawnmowers don't really come here. 
So in some ways, it's more interesting to paint than someone's well-cared lawn. As you see, the closer you get to the foreground, the more detail will be visible. And besides more detail, more contrast. You'll start to see I'm applying darker tones into the mix. And even little details like pieces of wood that are in the grass. But that doesn't mean not to blur. Now it's getting more strategic. And even though there's a piece of wood there, I know the grass ultimately will cover it. But this is how you make grass even more believable by getting sharper up close. And this is where you wanna to try to capture individual blades. Cause it makes sense. By doing this, you're given the impression that there's more grass in the background. It's kind of like a mind trick. As you get closer, you will start using the liner brush even more. Another good thing to do is as you paint, go along with the darks that you have applied. Using a tiny brush, using a tiny flat brush, I'm constantly going back and looking at areas that look too sharp in the background or foreground and blurring them. At some point while painting the grass, you're gonna be looking less at the photo and more at the painting. And in some ways, scrutinizing every section that might not look believable. You'll come across some sections and be like, I need a few more blades here, and another where you wanna blur it more or apply some darker greens or brighter ones. It's about carefully observing, but ultimately the end goal is it has to look like grass. Again, I'm gonna speed up and fast forward a little bit. But what I'm trying to demonstrate here is to build this grass, you might have to in some ways go blade by blade. Keep in mind most grass is vertical, but that doesn't mean some grass sways a little bit to the left or to the right. Variation is the key. And working from the back to the front helps. Again, like stated before, lay bodies of color, some line work, blur, and repeat. But as you're trying to finalize the grass, it's gonna be less bodies of color and the blur is gonna be more strategic, such as between grass blades. And you might have to start applying little details that will make the grass more believable, such as individual blades of grass that stand out or stuff hidden in the grass, like a branch. As mentioned before, the hardest blades to do are the ones up close, especially if dirt is visible. One thing to be mindful is dirt might not be level. And in this scenario, it's definitely not. And also there's dead grass. So besides painting green grass, there's also dead ones that are right below. Again, I looked at the photo for an idea of how everything will be and start applying some lines to mimic the dead grass. Also, I'm applying some darks into the grass, especially where it connects to the ground. Grass does cast a shadow and there's less light in that area where the grass is covering, so it makes sense for it to be dark underneath. And while the dark is wet, it's good to apply blades into it. That way, the wet on wet action of the paint in a way blurs and becomes a soft line coming out of the darkness. In some ways, if you fail to make the grass in the front believable, you will fail the illusion of everything else that you worked at in the back. So in some ways, so think of how important it is to establish this grass. Again, towards the end, I'm scrutinizing everything. I'm even applying darks in between each blade to sharpen them even more. I'm also applying brighter grass so they stand out in front of the darker ones. Definitely more contrast. But while doing this, also I'm paying attention to how it looks in the background. Just because I'm doing the foreground doesn't mean to ignore the background in the end. Think of it as a constant back and forth battle and you have to find the right balance of detail. And sometimes that involves going back into the background and changing a few things. In this situation, I'm actually adding a few more blades of grass kind of in the middle. Ideally, you want to have a nice transition from more to less and bright to dull to create an illusion of death. Again, it's a lot of repetition. We're constantly applying stroke after stroke. 
Again, within the grass, there are actual different plants, especially if it's wild grass. And in this closer proximity, it's a good idea to try to establish those differences, even if they're very minimal. It's not gonna be shown in the video, but I did go back later and added a little more variations of different plants and weeds. But here, there's some darker green plants somewhat visible and what appears to be some dandelion-like plants also. This painting doesn't just have grass. The main focus is the actual tree that has fallen. So it's very important to paint and make it look like it actually belongs in the area. But one of the things I did is I darkened the grass where the tree trunk is. That way it kind of stands out a little. And I also darkened some of the blades of grass that are touching the ground. That way the blades have the appearance that they are actually anchored into the soil. Little by little, I continue to build the grass blade for blade, especially since this is getting closer to the viewing plane. As I get closer, there's other little details I will try to capture. There's not just grass, there's little plants as well. And I'm also going back into certain areas, applying some darks, especially between certain areas to make blades stand out. I'm applying darks in between certain blades to make them stand out a little, blurring here and there to make others recede, and applying more line work. As mentioned before, I'm using the photo a lot less and looking at the painting more carefully. It is good to also step away from the painting and even take it away from your studio and have a good look at it to see if there's more things or less things to do. For me, I knew for sure I had to keep building the grass stroke by stroke and capture certain variations as well because grass is not always identical. Variations will make it more believable especially if it's wild grass. To wrap up this video, I will simplify the whole process. Lay out bodies of color, start doing some line work, blur if necessary, and then repeat, and possibly add more line work as you get closer and blur more towards the back to give the illusion of distance. And don't forget, repeat. In some ways, the more grass that you show, the more believable that it will be. If you made it to the end, thanks for watching. If you appreciate these kinds of videos, let me know in the comments. I'll make more. Once again, my name is Char Arlambos. I go by Bob. I'm not your typical painter. Until next time, bye.